So we're at a score of, of one, one ACH 50. Uh, can you just briefly cap, like what, is, what does that mean for, for health of the building and health of interior air? And, and why, why should we care about that number as people living in houses? It's a really good question. I mean, first of all, that is below probably 99.2% of Southwest Missouri, Missouri in general. Uh, that's a really good number uh, to start with. That's, that's pre-insulation. Uh, that's before the air sealing benefits of spray foam. So, uh, and when you talk about the health of the house, we care about what we breathe. We yeah. spend, we sleep, we sleep in here at night. Uh, our family lives in here. And the importance of that is that now we can control this air. Now that it's tight, now that it's efficient, it's like, okay, now um, pollens and allergens and dust and all the things that are infiltrated into your home um, uncontrollably, now we can control them, now we can filter them, now you can put a good, you know, uh, uh, filtration into your HVAC system. Um, you can humidify and dehumidify to your comfort level. Um, and, uh, and, and then you can control CO2. Like there's so much now that you can control when it's tight. And that's the importance of it. And then when you talk about uh, all of the air leakage points, which, you know, this is a good example just because it's right here closest to the camera, but um, mold is an important piece to, uh, you know, most people have mold in their homes and they don't know it. They don't realize it. Uh, and in most traditional homes, they have mold, but it, there's so much air leakage that it may not affect their health directly, but it's there. And uh, areas like this are a good example of that, where you have cold air infiltrating into your building, hitting, it finds a warm substrate or surface. If it infiltrates here, and it wants to hit a piece of metal or the back plate and it wants to sweat, there's an opportunity for, and a lot of people say, well, what, is, what does mold need? It needs air, it needs a food source and moisture. Yeah. Uh, well, here's your food source. Uh, there's your cold air and there's your uh, condensation. Your, now yeah. you've got mold growth. Yeah. And that's behind your wall cavities. And in a lot of homes, that's behind uh, a majority of their wall cavities. They just don't realize it. So uh, in doing, what we did today and what how you're going to insulate your house you're going to eliminate the chances of that yeah which again make it now a controlled environment so now you can do whatever you want in that environment so I, i'm not wrong in saying that the way that we've constructed this has been well well thought through and this is just for the internet that calls me crazy is well well thought through and and that a sealed building envelope means more control of the indoor airspace means that we can keep indoor air quality yes much higher than if we had a building that you know the that breathes like we would, you know, a traditional vent, vented attic space, exactly. something like that, that the, where there's air moving through the walls. Because we're controlling the indoor airflow, we're able to control the indoor air quality that much better. Exactly. We, we, can, still, we can still let this house, house breathe, but we can do it mechanically. Now we can exchange the ambient air outside with this air in here, and we can exchange um, temperature, and we can exchange humidity through an ERV system. So now, you build it tight as possible, and then you can ventilate it dry. So we're so we're mechanically ventilating. So the house is breathing. We're not going to get stale inside because we're using an ERV system. We're getting we're getting all the benefits of a of a breathing house, but we have full control because we're controlling all the air that comes through it. Exactly. Yep. And and in doing so, you you uh, you reduce those air exchanges, uh, which is most of that is energy. You know. So yep. now you're reducing your utility bill as well, and the energy usage the carbon footprint and you know and down the list so how much how much better is a, a fully sealed build like this as opposed to something with like traditional fiberglass but if we're going to do fiberglass bats and and a blown in insulation in the ceiling how would that how is the indoor air quality better with with a spray foam versus um hard to measure it hard to quantify it but um Energy, we, we typically see anywhere between 30, in a, in a properly air sealed house like this, we typically see between a 30 and 50% reduction in energy usage. And then in doing so, you're improving that air quality dramatically. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of factors that are lead to air quality. If you have a dog that's outside rolling in the dirt and it runs inside, right, yeah. You know, you give up, well, your envelope didn't matter, you let the dog in. Yeah. Um, but, um, no, uh, controlling, you know, whenever your air is infiltrated, 
it's bringing dirt, it's bringing pollen, it's bringing all of the things that you don't want into your house with it. So, so yeah, so spray foam is, air, the air sealing is, is huge and that's, yeah. It's, it's the belt and suspender. So what we did today is the belt. We're gonna spray foam it next. And that's the and suspenders. That's the suspenders. Now we know that the envelope is sealed properly. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for coming out and doing this. And yeah, absolutely.